Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Analyst. We are in chapter 4 and we almost completed every topic here in the series. We will be moving to the sample questions of this chapter in this tutorial. So let's look at that. The question number one, uh, you work for a project which uses an agile approach in the telecommunication branch. The application develops a new interface to allow customers to modify their mobile phone plans directly or via the web application. You are performing system tests and work particularly on the screen used or to change the mobile phone plan. The user story you are testing is US 34 as a consumer or as a customer I want to be able to select a new mobile phone plan using uh, online so that I can change it. As part of these tests you and the product owner invite a business expert to perform an expertise test on the screen and indicate if they have any comments on the proposed solution. Now what kind of test are you performing? So generally if you understand the scenario it's like uh, first of all they're giving you a simple scenario about the organization and your role into that and then they're giving you a situation and also telling you what kind of activity is being performed here and then asking you can you relate those topics which we discussed earlier about the functional testing so if you see here we're talking about the uh, concern from an end user and then we are having a discussion to understand the requirement and implement that as a part of the you know requirement and then you know consider that as a part of expertise testing so here straightforward we are talking about the appropriateness of the system which will meet the requirement so uh, right sure the right answer here would be D functional appropriateness testing so if you have any query you can feel free to go back to the tutorial and understand more about appropriateness let's look at the next question number two assume you work for a company that has developed a software component to help users trade currencies a new software version of the component is being developed the main feature of this version is the ability to calculate different amounts of commission depending on the volume of trade so that's one of the point to be considered as you read the question make sure you keep highlighting the important part which can be related to your uh, question and the answer so here uh, additionally different categories of users like beginner intermediate expert are defined and different functions are provided to them according to their category you are the test analyst responsible for creating functional suitability tests which of the following statement correctly defines a level in the software development lifecycle in which relevant tests should be first be performed so here generally the scenario is provided to you and they have also given you the key area that what are we generally talking about and of course they have also given a clarity that you're talking about suitability testing so considering those things what do you think is the best thing to be done at this point of time so here if you see uh, option number a testing that commissions have been calculated correctly for low volume trades uh, generally there's no such specific thing performed during component testing so if you talk about component testing we do not conduct suitability testing as a part of component because it might consider certain uh, you know areas uh, in part of like the equ exact requirement what we are looking at so th th that should be done here so component testing is ruled out Testing the suitability of functions assigned to different users categories should be performed during acceptance. Now if you remember from the tutorial of suitability testing, the suitability testing is generally conducted in integration level, so acceptance test is also not applicable. C. The interoperability of the new function with other trading systems should be conducted in system testing. Now, of course, we are talking about suitability, then interoperability has nothing to do with it. But before you go for interoperability, you must have done your suitability internally first. So ABC is ruled out and we have to pick two options here. I'm sorry about that. It should be select two options. So we have got D, testing that commissions have been calculated correctly for high volume trades may be best performed during system test. Okay. Yes, it can be done because we are talking about generally conducted in integration. But following that system is also a part of functional testing. So uh, mainly it can also be performed for high level, high volume trades can be performed in the system testing. E, required coverage of high level business cases should be determined in system integration testing. Yes, that's also a part of it. So generally these are the two areas where suitability testing must be considered 
at this point of time. So, uh, that, the, so that's the right answer. We have got D and E as the right answer for this particular question. Let's look at the next one, number three. Assume you work for a company that has developed a software component to help users secure and easily manage all their passwords they have defined for different websites. It's just like Google Chrome. When you log into any uh, application, they prompt you, do you want to save your password? So that's what it is. This component is integrated into hundreds of websites used by millions of people worldwide. A new software version of the component is being developed. Which component? We're talking about the component which saves the password. The main feature of this version is the integration with specific operating system that does not currently support this component. So there are certain operating system which does not support this version of the browser component. Which of the following does not qualify as an interoperability defect? Now we're talking about not qualified. The word not means you have to look something other than interoperability. So let's see. A. Password are not saved for all the website which integrate with the component, that's interoperability. 5% of websites do not run on a specific operating system, it's interoperability defect because we're trying to relate few two things. Password has truncated on some browsers, interoperability defect. But D, saving the password becomes too complicated for some users. Of course, the moment it comes to users, it is user friendliness and that's usability. So the right answer is D is not a qualifying defect for inter interoperability. Question number four, which of the following statements define types of defect you would not typically consider in portability testing? So from the tutorial, we understand the portability is all about moving from one to another uh, environment and applications, whether it is portable or not. So I think we should have a straightforward answer related to portability. Question number A, an application does not function correctly in all intended target environment. Yes, that is about portability because we're talking about different environments and it should be portable. B, software cannot be installed for particular configuration. Even configuration is a part of portability. C, user with disability cannot interact with the application. That's accessibility, has nothing to do with portability. D. Certain software components within a system cannot be exchanged for others. That's a part of portability. That means upgrade of components should be possible. E. Incorrect data exchange between interacting components. That is, of course, not portability. It is in terms of interoperability. So the right answer here is C and E, which should be picked as two options. That is related to, not related to uh, portability testing. And the question number five, which of the following statement is correct regarding usability testing? So we have five options again, and you should pick one of them here. Sorry, four options, and we should pick one. So this is how I really identify that when you have more, four, more than four options, that means you have to pick two. Please read carefully during the examination. So which one of this is re correct regarding usability testing? Uh, a simple hint here before I read out the options to you. When it comes to users, it is related to user friendliness and that's what is usability testing. So you can eliminate C and D here. Let me just quickly read it for you. Heuristic evaluation can be used to survey the user and find usability problems. So you can survey, you can uh, find the usability problems, but of course heuristic evaluation is not the way to do that. Usability can be verified by running comparison with existing unacceptable products. Uh, why do we want to run uh, unacceptable products? If the comparison comes when you have a set of requirement, then of course you will target the requirement area first rather than competing with other unsuccessful versions. Now when it comes to A and B, the usability should be verified against the requirement and validated by the real user. I think that's the most relevant option what we see here because we have got the requirements and it should be validated by the real users in terms of getting the right uh, user friendliness. B, validation of the usability requirement should be done after release to enable users to participate. Uh, that could be probably done, but uh, what's the point? When you have released it, you have very uh, high cost to fix anything. But if you want to validate before that and you use real users there, that will be more beneficial and cost saving to you. So I hope that was quite clear to you. Uh, that's all from this particular tutorial. We have discussed certain questions on chapter number four. So.
We'll be getting back to you with chapter number five. Should you have any query, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address you. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team. Happy learning.